Welcome back to r slash legal advice, where people ask questions, get advice and we get satisfaction. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe to join our amazing community and without any further ado, let's dive right into the stories. And the first one is an update to the story where OP's roommate vandalized his car by keying the word PEDO in his driver's side door. So this one is titled Conclusion to the My Former Roommate Vandalizing My Vehicle Story. Good afternoon legal advice community, today was the day that I went to small claims court against my former roommate as I had suspected he did not show up at all. I let the judge know that he did receive both copies of the summons, the one that I'm required to mail to him and the one that the sheriff's office served him with. So there should have been no reason why he didn't show up, I also let the judge know that shortly after he received both summons he had moved out. The judge asked me if I had any way to get in contact with him and I said no, I also said that he didn't leave a forwarding address so I have no idea where he could be at. In the end I requested the judge to issue judgment in my favor and she honored my request. Now I have to wait 10 days before I can file anything that would allow me to recoup my funds through alternative means. Thank you to everyone who gave me advice on this topic. I hope that my update gives everyone the conclusion they were hoping for. Well I mean sort of the conclusion we were hoping for because I am still curious why the f the neighbor did this in the first place. Maybe he was just drunk or something but I really would love to know the reasoning behind a stupid action like this. And the next one is titled Poisoned at family dinner. I am currently on vacation visiting family for Christmas. I am 20 female, a vegan by choice, however I am allergic to red meat. I was bitten by a lone star tick which caused me to develop a severe allergy to meat. My family makes fun of me for being vegan though I cook for myself for all meals and don't mention it much at all. Anyway I guess some of my extended family didn't know the severity of my allergy because my younger cousin, 16 male, chopped up steak extremely finely I guess and put it in my butternut squash soup. Shortly after I ate some of my soup I could not breathe and was breaking out in hives. I woke up in the hospital on Christmas day, my mom called an ambulance when she saw my face swelling, my cousin did not say sorry when I started breaking out in hives, he started laughing and told me what he had done. I woke up to a text from him saying, stop overreacting, you need protein, with a picture of a slaughtered cow. His parents are not very well off, in fact I don't think they have insurance, I just want to know should I pursue a legal case or is this an overreaction. And a user in the comments said, that text is essentially a confession and it doesn't do anything to create the impression that he didn't know the severity, it may be read as him accusing you of exaggerating it, you have medical evidence that that isn't true so let the police sort it out. He has more than earned the hassle. And another user said there are some obstacles to consider before pursuing this. In NE parents are only responsible for up to $1000 in medical costs for their children's actions. You may have trouble collecting and it is not 100% clear the child or their parents are liable. Some questions to consider. Do your cousin's parents own a home or have renter's insurance? Do they work for a living? Do they live off disability or welfare or are otherwise judgment proof or are they collectible? What kind of out of pocket and total paid by insurance medical costs do you have? Did you miss work or do you have any other expenses besides medical bills? If your cousin or cousin's parents say I didn't know OP was allergic to meat, I just thought they didn't like it, do you have anything like text messages to refute that? If the child purposefully poisoned the food but did not intend on the poison causing a potentially life threatening reaction and thousands in medical bills, is it considered willful and intentional? I would forward your cousin and their parents info to your health insurance party and ask them to recover their costs from the at fault party or sue them in small claims court if you live nearby. 
consulting with a personal injury lawyer is another option. And guys, if you have watched until here and enjoy legal advice, please don't forget to like the video and maybe even post some star emojis in the comments if you want to go the extra mile in terms of supporting me. Recently, at least when the YouTube algorithm is sort of kind to me, we have frequently been reaching 1000 plus likes, which is absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for that. And an update to the Poisoned at Family Dinner story. Hey guys, I first just want to thank you all for the support regarding my last post. I've had a free consultation with a personal injury lawyer and have filed a police report like many of you suggested. I let my cousin and aunt and uncle know this and they immediately ended up offering to pay my hospital bill and ambulance ride in full. My cousin gave me a half-hearted apology and his parents told me he won't be leaving the house for the next year and will be severely punished for this. I have decided not to press charges, I don't really have the money slash time for it and all I needed was my medical expenses paid. I just plan on not going to any family gatherings where he is for a long long time. Thanks again for all the love and support. And the next one is titled Texas, wife has custody and wants me to allow her new husband to adopt our son. Do I have to do this? Basically the title. Ex-wife told me that I have to do this or else she will take me to court to force me to do this. They married this year, she divorced me 4 years ago, our son is 7. Can she demand this from me? Can she actually take me to court if I don't agree? Location is Austin, Texas. And a user in the comments asked, do you pay child support? Do you exercise visitation? You certainly don't have to consent to an adoption if you don't want to, and if you haven't abandoned him, she won't get your rights removed. OP answered, yes to both, good to hear, I was worried they will side with her. And then the commenter further said, in that case, there's no way in hell she will succeed, but you should definitely keep proof that her goal is to cut you out of your son's life. The custodial parent has a duty to promote the child's relationship with the other parent and trying to replace you with a new husband is the exact opposite. Update to the ex-wife custody story. Thanks for the help. She ended up taking me to court, her lawyer focused a lot on my criminal record which had happened before I even met her and she married me knowing it. Her lawyer claimed otherwise that I had hidden my record from her and she only learned about it after our marriage. This was very easy for me and my lawyer to disprove as I had email communications with her acknowledging my record. She insisted the emails not being in her inbox is proof that the emails are made up. Perhaps she seriously thought deleting the emails from her account would delete them from mine too. Her own lawyer looked really upset after this. She dropped the case immediately after that hearing. Her own husband apologized to me, said he wouldn't have agreed to come forward for adoption if he knew the truth. He was a decent guy, ex lied to him about me to get him to adopt my son. It's been a couple of months since then and according to my son, they are now separated. I am talking to my lawyer to change the custody agreement too. And the next one is titled CA, grandmother gave my brother and me an equal share portfolio each in the late 90s when we were kids. Brother sold his when they were worth a car, I left mine in and now they are a substantial amount, brother and his girlfriend want my half now. When my brother was 16 and I was 4, my grandmother set aside a shared portfolio for us. As soon as we were old enough, it was transferred into our own accounts and it was only 4 years later that my brother dipped heavily into his and bought a new Honda. I knew about mine for much longer than he did before it became mine and watched it grow since I understood what it was. By the time I was given full control, it was already worth a ridiculous amount because a big portion of it was invested in Apple and I am torn on using the funds locked up as they are because my dad drilled it into me to leave it to grow until I am 40 something. I don't talk much with my brother, he has done some stupid things to the family over the years and didn't really grow up with him, so all I usually hear about his life comes through my dad. His new girlfriend works in law though and I have received a formal letter from them both that the investments my grandmother made were designed to be for both of us to use not just for me alone and his was only around $15,000. The number is right, but mine was only worth that at the time he spent it too. They want half of the value of mine now and his girlfriend has informed me if I don't give them access then the legal fees and fines would eat up my half and I would be left with nothing. 
The dividends alone support a huge part of my life and they have saved me a few times. If half of that disappeared, it would set me back years. I know it sounds selfish, but I am really used to having the extra income back me up when I have wanted to move. I have lived in four states by my own choice and I want to move and take in more before I settle down if I ever do. How likely is it that they will win and leave me with nothing? As far as I know, there was no paperwork or will, just my grandmother's word. She set up my brother's accounts when we turned 19, but she gave them to dad at the same time as my brother got his and dad transferred the whole lot to me six years ago. For my share, I have all the logins, the trading accounts and bank accounts are in my name and the shares are all solely in my name too. Should I find my own lawyer and if I need one, what kind do I need? I have an accountant I have used for years, but this doesn't seem like an accountant's problem, but a law one. And a user in the comments said, okay, I'm a CA lawyer, here's my take on it solely from your facts. Number one, grandmother set up a trust with your dad as trustee, father as trustee distributes title to both of you when you reach a certain age, the trust and purpose of the trust your grandmother set up is now dissolved. Once you each received control and title of your money, the trust was gone and the purpose for which grandmother set it up, in other words, so my grandsons would have a portfolio they each could use as their own once they reached a certain age, is complete. Number four, whatever each of you did was each your responsibility. If he had taken the money out and won the lottery, he wouldn't have raised over and given you half the proceeds, right? Lastly, you have a statute of limitations defense. If you are both in your mid-twenties or older, I assume you are both in your thirties, your brother likely missed any chance to sue you for damages. Really, lastly, I'm not even sure what he can sue you for. There's no longer a trust. Sleep well, he cannot take your share. They are bluffing. I work in probate and what they are trying to do is scare you into settling, even though you don't owe him a penny. P.S. Great job keeping the portfolio. I wish I had your father's wisdom when I was a teenager. And guys, as I've said many times before, money often turns friends and even family into enemies. Did you ever come across any situation in your own life where either a family member or a friend or something has turned hostile towards you because of some money issue? I would suppose it happened to many of us and a friend of mine always said, don't lend money to any of your friends or your family because there will always be trouble in the future. Or at least don't lend money that you really need or want back. Always anticipate that the person in question might not give you the money back. Good news update to the grandmother portfolio story. Mostly good news, I worked with my dad and got my own lawyer. I got the timeline of my shares wrong, but it comes out the same. What my brother and I inherited from my grandma was originally part of my grandfather's portfolio. He was the money savvy one. My grandmother looked after those after he died and she personally set up my brother's accounts and gave him control of his part. She did not do the same with mine before she died. I thought she had already set the accounts up for me and given control to dad before passing. Instead, the shares were in her will and she left everything she owned to my dad with instruction that what was $15,000 worth when my brother got his equivalent part would go to me when I was old enough to know how to take care of them. There was no trust, she just trusted my dad. My dad did the right thing and set up accounts for me and gave me control six years ago. My dad put some of his own shares in too as an extra leg up. Dad admitted to me he had chewed out my brother last year when he came to him asking for money and dad had supported him several times over the years and got to the point that he had enough. My brother found out I still had my investments because dad used me as an example of how brother should have been using the money. That is how my brother found out I still had shares and they had grown. According to all that info my lawyer tells me I am in the clear but it is not going to get to the point of finding that out in court as my brother's girlfriend was only a legal secretary. Secretary. I say was because the firm she worked for apologized and informed my lawyer that she was terminated immediately. The letter I received from them had been edited to put her name in a position higher up than it should have been and some of the contact info had been changed. A week after she was fired, my brother visited me begging for money. His girlfriend is in serious debt and she took a chance on scamming cash from me and lost. I felt awful rejecting my own brother over and over and if he hadn't involved his girlfriend needing an amount well into five figures, I might have given him some. 
The next morning I found all my tires had been slashed. Screw him, I don't feel bad anymore. The rest of the comments in the previous thread made me realize I don't know nearly enough about what I'm doing with the shares and dividends and money in general. A lot of the decisions I've made have been with my dad's help and his advice has paid off well so far, but not because I knew it would, but because I had no idea what I was doing and left it up to him. I have booked in to work with a financial advisor to make the most of what I have. Thanks for all your comments. And the last one is titled, Someone is threatening to release nude photos of me that were taken when I was underage and I am terrified that I will lose my job and be arrested for what is essentially child P-O-R-N. When I was 14 or 15, I am now in my early 20s, I had a boyfriend who convinced me to give him nude photos. I wasn't thinking at the time that any nudes of me would essentially be illegal, so I did it. In total I think there were probably about 100 images or so and a couple videos. He had them all on his computer and most were taken by me and a few were taken by him. I know that he showed the pictures to some people when we broke up, like had the people over to his house and pulled up the photos on his computer. I didn't know he actually sent them to anyone, which was bad of him to do, but I asked his sister to delete the photos and she did. I then forgot all about it, it was so long ago that until very recently I barely even remembered it happened. I don't want to give any identifying info, but within the last year I have gained a few hundred thousand followers on a social media platform. I make money from that social media platform and from partnerships I got through it and it is now how I support myself. Yesterday a guy I went to school with who I didn't even realize was friends with my ex-boyfriend contacted me and told me that he had those nude photos and he would post them online if I didn't pay him $10,000. I don't know how he got them but I know for a fact that he does have them. All or most of them from what I can tell and the videos too. My reputation would be completely ruined by this, I would lose followers and I know the partnerships I have would end and this is how I make my living so that would be a huge blow. Not to mention I am absolutely terrified that I will be arrested for taking photos that are pretty much very illegal. If they were taken while I was over 18, I would go to the police for him blackmailing me, but if I do that now I will essentially be admitting that I took part in child P-O-R-N. I should have known that my ex-boyfriend could have sent them somewhere else before his sister deleted them from his computer, but I wasn't just thinking at the time and I definitely didn't realize it would come back to bite me in this way. I can afford to send this guy $10,000, but I know if I do this probably it won't be the only time he asks for money and I cannot really do it more than once and my reputation will be completely annihilated if he releases these photos. I don't know what to do here and I am freaking out really badly. Can anybody help me or give me advice? Should I go get a lawyer? And a user in the comments said, keep any texts or messages from that guy, go get a lawyer, follow their advice and they will be able to provide the best ways to contact authorities about that guy while mitigating risk for any legal or criminal fallback on you. And an update to the nude photo story. So as the title states, last year I was dealing with blackmail from someone who got a hold of nudes from when I was 14 or 15. I thought I would update now that it has come to a resolution. I went to see a lawyer the day after I made that post. He drafted a letter formally telling the guy to F off and was very kind in assuring me that I had nothing to worry about. It was radio silence from the guy for about 6 months and then I got an email from another address with the same demand saying that the money needed to be sent in 24 hours or the pictures would go live. I panicked and called my lawyer, asking him to meet me at the police station. He was really understanding, literally left his daughter's birthday party to come help me and when we got there we met with a detective who was also really nice and heard me out. Long story short, we found out that the guy blackmailing me was actually, drumroll please, my ex-boyfriend masquerading as someone else. He was arrested and it was also discovered that he had broken into my apartment on a few occasions, he had things in his possession that he could have only gotten by getting into my residence. I wasn't the only one who was being stalked and they also discovered other illegal activity that I wasn't really allowed to know about. Anyway, my ex was just sentenced a few days ago and he won't be getting out anytime soon, plus I am getting married in a few months and I will be moving to another state far away from my ex. So I thought I would update here with the good news. I was afraid that I would be arrested and lose everything, but thanks to you guys I got up the courage to deal with the situation. 
question. I really appreciate the advice I got here, thank you again so much. And I have to admit, ripe stars, that I am very very happy that everything ended on a positive note for the young woman in the story and this awful ex-boyfriend got arrested. But I guess guys, that is also one of the dangers of being in a relationship, because you never know when you break up with someone how they will react afterwards. Like this guy turned into a creepy revenge PORN stalker essentially. And guys, unfortunately, we have already reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed today's stories and if you haven't already, please also go to patreon.com slash ripe YouTube, where I upload exclusive Reddit videos starting at just $3 a month. This is a great way to support me in case you are interested and the chance for me to become independent from YouTube revenue. Thank you so much for watching, please don't forget to subscribe and like the video and I hope to see you again tomorrow.